So what is it that you're going to do about your mail when you get ready to go off cruising? Well, I've got some questions that you can ask yourself in the road to finding the right way to deal with your mail. Hi, I'm Nika Waters and welcome to the Boat Galley podcast. Today we're talking about choosing a virtual mailbox. Today's episode of the Boat Galley podcast is sponsored by SeaTech Systems, experts in cruiser communications. Introducing the Narwhal Connect, a complete internet and calling solution for your boat. With plug and play Wi-Fi, cellular and satellite, it's the only system designed to give you cost-effective internet anywhere in the world. Visit SeaTech.com for more information. That's S-E-A-T-E-C-H.com. As a bonus, Boat Galley podcast listeners get free shipping with a code BG20 at checkout. SeaTech Systems. Navigate anywhere. Connect everywhere. One of the things that you will have to think about when you get ready to go cruising is what to do with your mail. It's easy enough to say that you don't need mail because after all, these days, many of us aren't getting much real mail at all. Unfortunately, there are those very occasional, very critical pieces of information that do still come by physical mail. Things like your end of the year tax statements and bank account statements, statements from the IRS, your driver's license. There are a number of different ways you can choose to deal with your mail. And certainly when we started off the very first time we went cruising, we just asked my parents. That was simple. Having somebody who you know and you trust to take care of your mail can solve all these issues very, very easily. You shift your address to theirs, forward all the mail, and then hopefully you're in touch with them to let, for them to be able to let you know if there's something critical that's come in. This time around, though, given that our cruising plans are a little bit more open-ended and we didn't want to burden my parents with the necessity of looking for mail that might be coming at odd times, we thought it was time to pay somebody else to deal with our mail. We're planning on an open-ended cruise. Who knows where we're going to go, but there won't, we won't have easy access to mail all the time. If you Google mail forwarding, you're going to get an incredible array of different options in less than one second. And of course, the first four of them are ads. And how can you find and how can you start sifting through these many different options that are out there? What I'm going to share with you today are three main questions that I think you need to consider while you're trying to figure out the idea of a virtual mailbox or a mail forwarding service, depending on what you're choosing and what you're after. I'm going to talk about the four options that came down to our final list and then what we chose and why. When I first started my research, I started out by checking out Bean Gifford at Sailing Totem and Carolyn Sherlock from the Boat Galley and their particular blog posts that they have written about the matter. They've each chosen different services for their mail handling, but in terms of ways to start thinking about things, theirs are a great place to start, and there's no sense in reinventing the wheel. You may come up after listening to this, you may have your own questions that you wanna ask or your own iterations, but maybe this is a place for you to start. I also will encourage you to check out their two blog posts about it, and we've linked to those in the show notes. So once you've decided that you need a place to get mail, how do you start to narrow down those millions of choices that pop up when you hit Google? Number one is residency. Figuring out where you want to claim residency can be a monster factor in where you're choosing to have your mail sent to. There are financial considerations, there are voting considerations. For some people, there's an emotional attachment to becoming a resident or being a resident in a given state. Banking institutions are getting uh, pretty smart and um, very quick about figuring out any address that is commercial in nature, like most mail forwarding services. And this is important because the Patriot Act that passed after 9-11 requires that you have a residential address attached to any bank account. Just be aware that that residential address 
doesn't necessarily need to be your residential address, but you need to have a residential address that's associated with your bank account. So if you are worried about that and don't actually have your own physical address, it's a good idea to ask a friend or a family member to let you use their real address for your bank, even though all your mail is being sent somewhere else, just as a caveat or something to think about. So number one, you want to think about residency. Number two, you want to think about what services are you really after? Do you need it just to be a kind of a clearinghouse where they're holding your mail until you tell them where you want them to package it all up and send it to you? Do you need them to scan the outside of the envelope? Do you need them to actually open up what's inside and scan it? Do you need them to shred it? Do you want them to hold it for eons and eons and eons until you get back because you're only doing a three month or four month or five month cruise and you're just happy getting all your mail coming back in one fell swoop at the end of it. So are you looking for just a mail forwarding service or are you looking for more of a virtual mailbox? Number three, the third thing to think about is any extra special tidbits. This sounds a little bit like a cop out, right? But thinking about your personal circumstances and what particular things you think you might need, they might skew you to some additional considerations. If you're planning on sailing far, far, far afield and wondering about how to source the inevitable boat part, maybe you get real live checks from somebody every single month and you need to make sure that the person that is dealing with your mail can handle that depositing without too much trouble. What if you're planning on sailing somewhere relatively locally or in one kind of area and you really are longing for a physical place for regular get-togethers? All of these are special tidbits that came into play when we came up with our initial list and they may skew you towards choosing one or the other. Once you've decided on things like residency and the services you actually need and any special things, then you can get down to kind of comparing services. And any one of those initial questions will probably limit those incredible wide number of options. One of the things that Bian on Sailing Totem suggests in her blog post is to run a hypothetical situation around your own mailing needs. One of the things that's challenging when you're trying to compare these mail services is that no two of them price things exactly the same way. And if you run the same scenario for each option, it makes it much easier for you to actually compare. So thinking about what we went through when we came up with our list, we initially thought that we would be drawn to a state with no income tax, like Florida, but after doing a little bit of research, we realized that that would probably not actually be a smart way to go. It would be more of a false economy because while yes, we would have saved a couple of hundred dollars and literally that was all it was, was a couple of hundred dollars on income tax. But in terms of what health insurance rates would be, the health insurance rates are through the roof. So it was a very false economy. The other big piece for us was making sure we reviewed or read the reviews of the places that we were initially considering. Mail is a sensitive enough concern that being cautious feels like a really smart idea. So I did a bunch of research on Women Who Sail, which is a Facebook group uh, on Cruisers Forum, and then just Googling best, best mail forwarding services for cruisers and coming up and reading a whole bunch of different blog posts and different people and what they had chosen. And so we were down to four options, St. Brendan's Isle, which is based out of Florida, Dockside, which is based out of Washington State, Earth Class Mail, I'm not actually sure where they're based, and Traveling Mailbox, which is based in North Carolina. Both St. Brendan's Isle and Dockside are cruiser-created businesses, so they absolutely 100% understand the cruiser lifestyle to a T, Obviously, as cruisers, we're definitely nomads. So these guys are very, very good at that whole thing. The last two, Earth Class Mail and Traveling Mailbox, are much less niche. 
though they do obviously cater to nomadic lifestyle people, but they're also far less personal. They're much larger. And the base costs for all across all four of these, uh, they the cheapest one you could get go, starts at about $15 a month. And you can spend all the way up to in excess of $75 a month just for the ability to have that address at that location. And there are some extra fees for things like mailing packages or dealing with checks or if you want to hold mail for an excess amount of time. Each one of those has their own separate kind of way of looking at things. For these four, there's something specific and amazing about each one of them. St. Brendan's Isle is, at least for East Coast based cruisers, seems to be the gold standard. They've been in business since 1988. They've been around for a whole lot longer than any of these other places. And they offer a variety of services that go way beyond just dealing with mail. They are ones that will help you with sourcing parts. They'll help you with renewing Coast Guard documentation. They'll work with you on Florida residency. And actually, they've spent an awful lot of time going to bat with the elections board to make sure that you're eligible to vote if you are in Florida with an address at St. Brendan's Isle. If you spend any time on any cruiser sites, you will hear people talking about and singing the praises of St. Brendan's Isle. Dockside Mail, based in Washington State, seems to be positioning themselves very much in the same way as St. Brendan's Isle, but for West Coast-based cruisers. Washington State, like Florida, is one of these no-income tax states, and so it's particularly appealing for people who really think of themselves as being based on the West Coast. This was founded by cruisers in 2011, and they absolutely pride themselves on customer service. A little hint for Dockside Mail, if you talk to Angela at Dockside, and if you mention being Gifford and Sailing Totem, then Sailing Totem will earn a small stipend at no extra cost to you. So if you talk to Angela at Dockside, please do mention Sailing Totem or Bean Gifford. Earth Class Mail was another one that made it to our list of finals. And what was really appealing to me about Earth Class Mail was how they handled checks. Because I get a physical check in the mail every single month from Good Old Boat Magazine. And every other mail service charges a really high premium to deal with checks. Uh, Carolyn Sherlock has worked out a really great higher tech way to handle those few checks that come her way. She has St. Brendan's Isle open the mail, scan it, and then she prints the scan on board Barefoot Gal and deposits it via her mobile banking app. I made my way around this worry and this concern for myself by having a conversation with my employer about looking at being able to either go electronic or sending that check that I get every month directly to the bank. And she's actually going to do that. So my requirement for needing a, an easy way to deal with physical checks went out the window. And then the last one we considered was traveling mailbox. And this was initially one of the ones that was on my list because we were thinking initially we needed to keep a Virginia address. They're similar to Dockside in that they've been in business since 2011, but they are not cruiser started. They claim that they offer non-mailbox addresses, like physical, real physical addresses that uh, meet the requirement of residency to be, to get past those banking institution Patriot Act things. Although I'm not sure that's, um, I don't know how much that holds true when a bank starts really investigating things. Any of the addresses that Traveling Mailbox has that are not in Sanford, North Carolina, and they offer mailboxes in an awful lot of different states. But any of those addresses not in Sanford are just rented boxes at UPS stores. So the mail that comes in there is actually sent to North Carolina for any processing. So that takes a long time for you to actually get your mail. And the vast majority of negative reviews of traveling mailbox are from people who had mailboxes outside of that North Carolina facility. After doing that running of a scenario, we decided on traveling mailbox. The main thing for us with traveling mailbox 
We were very attracted to the price, for sure. We also really loved that they have immediate online help availability. We really enjoyed the included number of page scans and the very simple, easy online portal. We talked to a number of other cruisers who have used Traveling Mailbox, and their reviews were very, very helpful in cementing our decision. We've been using this for about six weeks, and we love it so far. We'll see, obviously, as things go on, we'll, we'll see how well it works. But so far, we're really, really happy with our decision. We love it that we get an email when a new piece of mail has arrived. And we look and decide right off the bat if we're going to open it or just shred it. We've set up an integration with Google Drive so that any open mail can be accessed while we're offline. And we've been really pleased with the accessibility and the responsiveness of the online live chat. One of the things that you will find and you'll hear me say over and over again is that any almost any single cruising decision is what's best really depends. And choosing a mail service is not any different than any of those other things. So I will encourage you to spend some time, do your research and figure it out for yourself. But maybe some of the questions that I've posed here will help you start to narrow down the options that are there. However you choose to deal with your mail, the important thing is it's time to get out cruising. I can't wait to see you out there. Thanks so much for listening to the Boat Galley podcast. If you have questions about the cruising lifestyle, please let us know. And don't forget, we love it when you share us with your friends. Have the most safe and healthy week.